Hey, what's up guys? JC here. What I'm bringing you guys today is a tutorial on how to reskin items inside of DayZ and make your own custom mod. So I hosted the Christmas IsTech server uh, this past December. All of the guns, most of the clothing, all of that I made myself and I'm going to show you how we did it. So first things first, you're going to want to create two folders on your desktop. Uh, you're going to name it your mod. This is how I do it at least. So name it test mod, and then you're going to make it at test mod. Now, once in this folder here, you're going to place a config file. I'll, I'm going to provide that in the description to make it a whole hell of a lot easier on you. So don't worry about that. And then in this folder here, you're going to make two more folders. One's going to be called add-ons and one's going to be called key. So that's all we have to do um, for right now. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and crack open a PBO and we'll go from there. Now, if you don't know how to get to the PBOs from day Z itself, what you want to do is you're going to go to your, wherever you have day Z locally installed on your machine. Uh, for me, it's my D drive. So we're going to go into day Z and then this folder right here, add-ons. These are all the PBOs. Once you install PBO Manager, I'll have a link to that as well. I recommend PBO Manager. Once you install PBO Manager, you'll see that the PBOs will have this red thing on it. They look like a little red book. That's what you're looking for. And these are all of the PBOs um, for like vanilla daisy items. Uh, so for instance, surfaces, if we open up the surfaces, data, Here's all your roadways. These are what all your roads look like. So if you really wanted to, um, you could reskin your own roadway. You can make your roadway look however you wanted it to look. But we're not going to get into that. Uh, to, for today, what we're going to do is we're just going to do a t-shirt because it's probably the easiest to do. So open up your PBO. You're going to open up your data folder. Uh, then we're going to scroll on down here to where the t-shirts are. Here's our t-shirts. Um, once you have PBO manager installed, uh, they're, look just, they're gonna look like this, these little white sheets because these are PAA files. The reason why they look blue for me is because I have Makiro's tools installed as well. I really don't like those tools. If you if you prefer those tools, by all means go for it. I just like, I like PBO manager and Daisy tools. It works perfect for me. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna open up Daisy tools. You're gonna open up your text view. This is how you see uh, PAA files. And we're going to just drag this over here. And then here's our blue t-shirt, just a standardized blue t-shirt. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up the folder that we just had. What did I call it? Test mod right here. Open this up. You are going to switch this to all files and you're going to name this or just going to make it a, an extension PNG. That way you can open it up in your uh, preferred text editor or uh, image editor. I'm sorry. So once we have that, here's our t-shirt. Perfect. So now what we're going to do is we're going to just grab a pattern. Uh, this, this isn't the way that I would recommend doing it, but this will work. Um, let's just grab a pattern that we've had here. Let's, let's grab this one. So we'll just grab this pattern here for now. Actually, no, we're going to put this back. So go ahead and open up your uh, your favorite uh, image editing software, whatever that may be. I'm currently using GIMP because it's free and it does just as, as good as uh, Photoshop in my opinion. I haven't used Photoshop in a very long time. Anyways, so what you're going to do is once you grab this, just drag it over so it's the same size. And we can hit enter, right? Looks good. Sure. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our, uh, let's grab this. Let's go to our patterns folder. Let me open that up on this side. We're going to grab our tie-dye, uh, this, our tie-dye thing. And we're going to go to scale tool. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. Like this, hold our shift button. And we're just going to resize the entire shirt or I'm sorry, the re the resize the entire pattern and hit that. And essentially this is, we're just making a tie dye shirt. So we're going to file, we're going to save as, um, uh, I'm sorry, we're not saving as we're going to export as, 
uh, where's my export button export as um, let's go ahead and go into it's in our test mod already t-shirt dot blue underscore PNG we're actually going to change this now to let's just do it um let's do t-shirt underscore uh, die and export uh, export image blah 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 export it one is that done you can close this down if you want to save it as like a a template by all means you can but I just close it down so now if we open up our test mod folder uh, let's see here open up our test mod folder let me drag it over we now have our normal t-shirt blue and then we have our t-shirt underscore die so what we're gonna do at this point is we are going to open up Daisy tools again we are now going to go to image to PAA. We're going to swing this over into here and we're going to just hit process. And this is going to turn the PNG into a PAA file, which is how um, Daisy reads the, uh, how it reads it. So I don't it, windows 11. I have to close the folder and reopen it for it to be there, but here it is t-shirt underscore die. Now's the fun part. Now we're gonna get into the config of it all. So essentially the way this is done is, so your class up here, this is what you're going to name your mod. So for me, it's gonna just be test mod. Um, required add-ons. These are what have to be required for the mod to work. So if you wanted to make like, a, I don't know, if, if you wanted this to only be like, only you can use it for some reason you can you can make an, a, a different mod be required so where for instance if you wanted people who only played on uh uh, B uh barrington for instance the map barrington you could require that mod and then only people who have barrington loaded will be able to use it if that makes any sense but just keep this um the way i have it this this is basically everything that's in the base game and that's all you need uh, so your, your CFG vehicles, this is going to be for your clothings, like all of your clothings for some reason are under CFG vehicles. And then, um, uh, like melee weapons and stuff. So if we come down here, you, you're not going to have this one. I'll give you the, the, the test one. Um, and then you'll have CFG weapons if you want to do weapons. So we're actually going to get rid of all of this. Because you don't need all of this. All you need for this is this right here. So, what we're going to do now is, the way I have this done is, I've already called out the classes for most of the, most of the, um, the items that you need. Because essentially every time you, you put in a new item to skin, you have to call out the class. As you can see, Xmas underscore fire axe, and then you have to have firefighter axe. Now, if I didn't have it up here, I would have to, for instance, uh, where's our firefighter axe? I think I already, oh, here it is right here. I would have to have this. It would have to sit like this. So you would, you have to call out this class. And now once you've called out the class just one time, you can make as many of that uh, subclass as you can because then you call out the class right here. But keep that in mind. So if, if, if it's something that you need that is not up here, um, make sure you call out the class. You got it. You got to call it out. So this right here, the class Xmas underscore Firax, this is what we're going to call the shirt in, um, in your type files or... This is what goes into your type files. This is how you find it in your tools and whatnot. So we're just going to call it to make it easy. Uh, T-shirt underscore die. And then, like I said, we have to call out the class. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up here. Uh, see here tops. Ooh, look at that. I don't even have a T-shirt color base on here. Okay, so I'll just make it for you real quick. So t-shirt underscore color base. 
And then what we're going to have to do, hold on one second. Let me come over here. Uh, where are we going? Where are we going? Um, right here. Let me just grab this from this one. Whoopsies, didn't mean to do that. Open this one back up. So this goes like so. Yep, t-shirt color base, it's gotta be, uh, and then what we're gonna do is I'm gonna come up here to tops, and I'm gonna go ahead and add this up here. That way it's it's called out. That's totally my bad. All right, so t-shirt underscore die, calling out the t-shirt, uh, what it is, it was the t-shirt color base. Display name, this is what people are gonna see. So we're gonna say uh, the display name will be, um, I don't know, tie-dye t-shirt, right? We'll just call it t-shirt. We'll just call it a colorful shirt. Colorful shirt. Uh, description short. This is what you're going to see when you uh, when you see, you know, like when you hover over it. So let's just say, uh, yay, I've made my first mod. Perfect. Hidden selection. This is where we're going to put um, the texture. So with weapons, I've noticed you only have to do it once. For clothing, you're going to have to do it twice. So uh, this is basically the file where this shirt is done. So we're going to name this uh, test mod. And then we can delete all of this because I don't have subfolders for this particular mod. And this is where we call out the PAA file. And we called it t-shirt underscore die. So t-shirt underscore D-Y-E. And save. And that's it. That's all you got to do. So your config is now done. Everything's good. At this point, if you really wanted to, uh, you can get rid of this and you can get rid of this. All you really want is your, um, I mean, I would save those in a different file so you can like come back and look at them, but all you need in this folder is your PAA files. Otherwise, you'll make the mod way bigger than it needs to be. All right, so once we get to this point, you're going to open up your DAISY tools again, and now you're going to go to um, add-on builder. So once you open up your add-on builder, so your add-on source directory, this is where you're going to select, where's it at, test mod because that's where our config is. Destination directory, this is why I always make two folders. So you're gonna to go to at test mod and you're gonna set it to your add-ons. So you hit okay and you pack. If you don't want people uh, taking your code, you can binarize it, but I don't ever do that. Uh, I, I mean, the way I see it, this game is open source. If you want the code, just take the code. Like I'm not gonna cry over spilled milk. So. Once we close this down and we go into our test mod, if we open this, we now have a PBO. So now we have to sign it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to DS Utilities, and we're going to add our source directory. At this point, we're going to come down to uh, test mod, click on our add-ons folder, and we'll see that it is not signed. Now, if you get to this point, which I'm sure you will not have a key, perfectly okay. What you're going to do is where it says private key, you hit N. Um, name your key, whatever you want, and then you just hit create a key. What I've done is I've created a folder right here that says do not delete this shit because you do not want to lose your private key. So we're at whatever you put this, you don't ever want to lose your private key. So I don't need to make a key because I already have one. As you can see right here, I've got my keys. This, this private key, you do not want to lose. This is the key that goes with the mod. I'll, I'll show you that. You do not want to lose this one. So I already have it called out to that. We're going to go ahead and process the files and we're going to sign it. As you can see, it's signed. If we come here, I don't, I don't know why I have to do this, but if I come back into it, there it is, dying, die, dying Daisy, and I've got my buy sign. So now the key is empty. You're going to open up this, this folder and you're going to take your buy key and you're just going to copy it over. And that's it. You have essentially... Uh, built a mod and that's a structured mod and then from this point on what you would do is you would go to publisher um, you would call it whatever you want to name it so let's just do um, test mod 
Um, you're gonna you're going to make it public, of course. Uh, you come here. You're gonna find the at test mod and select the folder. Mod content structure seems to be valid. All signed. You would agree, and then you would publish. That's that's if you wanted to go onto the the Steam Workshop to put it on an online server. But what I like to do is I like to test my mods first. So the way I'm going to test my mod is I am going to go to right here. Let's go to File Explorer, and I'm going to test it in an offline mode. Which so we're going to go to Storage, Steam Library, Steam Apps, Common, Daisy missions if you guys want to know how to get an uh, uh an offline mode for you to test i can leave the link in the description for you as well this this particular mission has um cef tools like included community online tools which is really really nice so it's like i don't have to add that mod so what we're going to do is we're going to come back to our main folder right here i am going to take this at test mod folder and I'm going to put it here like I would if it was a regular mod. All right, we're not going into our workshop. This is how you would do like a regular mod. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back into our missions, uh, community offline mode Shinaris. Uh I'm gonna come here. This is my Windows batch. This is how I'd load the game. So what we're gonna do is we are going to, where is it? Show more options, edit. And we're going to come over to here to my mod equals. This is, it's got to be uh, case sensitive. So test mod. File and save. We can now close this and let's go ahead and, uh oh. File test mod config. I'll be right in one second. All right, so what it looks like I've done is in the config file, I had an error. So this is why I always like to test things in offline mode. So you see how we have this little uh, semicolon thing. You don't want that right here. That, that only comes up here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and save again, and we're going to do the whole process over. We're going to go to add-on builder, uh, test mod. We're now going to send this to our, we've already moved the file over. So let's go to our D drive, Steam library, common, Daisy, test mod, add-ons. And we're gonna repack the mod. Perfect. Now we're gonna re-sign it real quick because the PB, every time you repack a mod or anything like that, you have to re-sign it. So we're gonna do the same thing. Let's come down here to my D drive. Uh, common, Daisy, test mod, add-ons, and we're going to re-sign it. I'm going to re-sign it. It's been successfully signed, so we should be good to go ahead and fire up the, uh, the batch file again. And if we did it successfully, our game will load. That's what I thought it was. I wanted to show you guys that error because the, the little prompt that they give you doesn't always tell you exactly what's wrong. So... I'm glad that that happened, actually. Let you guys see what can go wrong. This It's so fickle. I mean, you literally have one wrong comma or one extra space or anything like that, and it will throw off the entire code. So, good. This is why I always test in an offline before I upload to a Steam Workshop. Plus, I want to make sure, you know, we can come in here and the, uh, the gun can't be positioned right or the clothing looks janky or anything like that. So, once we're in here... Uh, we pull up our, our tools, and I'm pretty sure we called it, let's just call it die, t-shirt underscore die, put it on the ground, colorful t-shirt, <laughs> it's invisible, <laughs> okay, here's another error, here's another error, remember how I said um, you need three, right, I only have the two, so as you can see, the shirt's invisible, I'm going to show you how to fix this. I'm actually glad that we're having these issues because it lets me show you guys uh, exactly because I ran into these issues when I was first doing it and I had zero idea of what the hell was going on. It's because you need this. So you need three of these. So you copy. So you comma. Do another one. Comma. Do another one with no comma. We're going to save it. This should this this should fix our issue. Now, another thing what we can do 
is um, I can close this real quick. Let me go to this other shirt mod that I was making. And what you can do, we're, we're getting a little a little ahead of ourselves now, but what you can do is you can come in here to under the description and item cargo size six by five, heat insulation is a 0 0.7. What this will do is this is going to make the shirt so six rows over, five rows down, so 30 slots. And heat insulation 0 0.7 is going to be, I think it's high insulation. So let's go ahead and save our shirt again. Uh, we can close this down now. Reopen up Daisy Tools. Repack the PBO. So test mod uh, add-ons. Pack it. It already exists. You want to override it? Yes. We're going to go to our DS Utilities again. Uh, test mod add-ons. It says it's already signed, but like I said, every time I redo a PBO, I always re-sign it because, I don't know, it's just habit for me. So we sign it. We should be able to open this up, go back into our game, and then we won't be invisible while wearing our, our gear. I really can't tell you why it does that. Um, I So essentially, if you wanted to make like um, full invisible admin gear, you can, you can basically set up a whole line of clothing like that that covers everything, gloves, long sleeve, long pants, boots, face mask, and a helmet. And essentially, uh, you can put that on and just be totally invisible. I don't know why you would want to because you can literally just go invisible with most... Um, admin tools but the options there so we're gonna go to object spawner again t-shirt die there it is on the ground see how it's 30 slots it's high insulation and now when we put it on we have our shirt so let's take all this crap off so we just have our shirt and there it is that is how you make your own custom clothing now you can get really crazy with the, uh, <coughs> excuse me, you can get really crazy with like the attachment slots and stuff. There's like a whole list of things you can do. You can put a knife attachment on here. You can put bandage attachments, like the whole nine, but we're not getting into that. And if you look at the description, so the, the shirt's called colorful shirt, like we called out and it says, yay, I've made my first mod. And that's it. Like it's, it's literally that simple. So now, um, I don't know why I'm picking all this crap up just to log out of the game. So now what we could do if we wanted to is we could upload this to the Steam Workshop and we're good to go. So now once you're, if you've done it the way I've done it to where you've tested it um, inside of like an offline mode, when you open up your publisher again, you're either A, going to have to drag it over back to your desktop or we're going to just call it... Um, uh, a tie-dye shirt, tie-dye shirt mod, looks great, um, public. Now you're going to have to go through and you're going to have to find that file. So I would have to, you know, come through here to Daisy, test mod. Everything's good. I would hit I agree. If you want to make a little screenshot for it, you can. And you just hit publish and then it's going to be on the Steam Workshop for you to download to your um your, your private server, your community server, whatever it is. And essentially, that's it. Uh, I tried to do this as quick as I could and, and be as uh, in-depth as I could. I'm, I'm actually kind of glad that we caught those errors because, like I said, when I was first learning how to do this, those errors were happening to me, and I, I there were no videos to explain it. You know, the videos that I watched were all seamlessly done with, like, one shot, you know? So it's like I had to teach myself what I was doing wrong. So I'm actually really glad that those errors happened. But um, if you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll be more than uh, happy to help you out. Um, or you can join the Discord. That'll be in the description as well. Um, that way, if you guys have any questions or, or concerns or, or anything like that, just let me know. And I'll, and I'll do my best to, uh, to help you out. But I appreciate you guys watching. I would appreciate a like rating if you're into that kind of thing. And um, yeah, I'll catch you guys later. Peace.